Good morning. It is Wednesday, March the 25th. This is uh, Creative Quarantine with Russell Loves Art. And we're, today we're going to be doing a uh, black crayon drawing on a white sulfite. Um, all you need today is ideally a black crayon, my preferred brand is the one I grew up with. Hi guys, good morning. Hi Paige. Uh, the brand I grew up with and most American children during the 70s and 80s, Crayola crayons. And uh, I tend to use a lot of crayons, uh, definitely when I'm going out and drawing. I have quite a collection of, of black crayons that I use on a constant basis. And as you can see, some of them you know, I've, I've sharpened down to get different uh, tips for drawing today. Um, I tend to primarily draw in either brown or black, and today I'm just going to be using black. And hi guys, hi Ava, hi Olivia. So today, what I'm going to be doing in particular is a kind of a childhood throwback for me. Is a an oak tree kind of in the style uh, used in uh, Winnie the Pooh and the Hundred Acre Wood. So we're gonna be doing kind of a pathway uh, in the Hundred Acre Wood that Pooh and Piglet would be walking across, uh, surrounded by beautiful oak trees. And I know during this time that we are in quarantine, or self-quarantine pretty much, um, to help curve COVID-19. Um, we're all thinking about wanting to go outside and right now the weather's not really pleasant so I'm gonna draw kind of a nice forest scene with some big full oak trees on a fun day so hi Isaac how you doing Ike so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna kind of frame out our our area where we're gonna be drawing so I'm gonna be using these sides here to kind of frame it out I'm gonna put kind of like the tree in the foreground and I'm gonna just start sketching a large oak tree with big roots. That's going to take up a big chunk of our foreground here. And again, I'm just kind of sketching it out with a sharpened uh, crayon here. So, and so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm kind of doing the frame or the outside of my tree first. I'm actually um, going to be I'm drawing a branch that's kind of jutting towards us, towards our point of view here. And that's going to get a little bit bigger as we come this way. All right. And oak trees, at least from Barry Sanders' world where he grew up in England. They were huge trees. Old growth. And I'm gonna push this branch almost all the way to the left-hand side here. Again, I'm just doing the outlines right now. And, you know, if you don't have confidence in drawing with crayon, because again, this is definitely a medium you can't a race. Hi guys. Oh, Grishaw. Um, that's okay. I mean, if you want to use a uh, pencil, go ahead. Um, if that's what you feel most comfortable in using for today's lesson, that's fine. Totally fine. So we're going to kind of do a little, a little nook and cranny here. And let's just say over on this side, we'll put a little growth and maybe a door of some sort. Yeah. We have kind of an 
idea of where things are. We're gonna put our pathway kind of this way. Very similar to what we did with um, the landscape. And when we are drawing a river, is that further away, these lines, these two parallel lines, this is going to be our pathway. The further away it is, the tighter they're going to be, the closer together, closer to our point of view, they're going to be wider. Okay? I'm going to put some shrubbery over here, and I'm just using kind of a broken line. This is going to be kind of like where my pathway is kind of going over a hill kind of thing. And down. Put in some shrubbery here. Maybe some other trees in the background. And again, I'm just sketching it out right now. Getting my bearings. Hi guys. Hey Dalton, hello Jennifer. And I'm just pushing the crayon around for right now. I'm kind of enjoying that process. Just figuring out where my information is going to go. I'm gonna put another tree back here. And I'm just gonna do some, as if there's foliage here, drop it down. Same thing here. Keeping it playful, not getting too worried about making it perfect for right now, as you can see. Trees back over here. Okay, and then I'm also going to come up here and kind of draw a hint of leaves from this tree itself. Coming down through the branches. In the background. Yeah, just like so. This is our main focal point, this this big tree. All right. Some trees and other foliage in the background here. Just a little hint of those. Putting them further back. And again, this is just a crayon. I used to make it a common thing. Actually, when I had more hair to hold <laughs> it, I used to put a crayon, you know, behind my ear all the time and have it have it available to draw with all the time, but not so much anymore. Ever since I shaved my head. So we're also going to kind of little hints of Grass. Same thing on this side, because we want this to be looking like a well-worn and well-established pathway. See that? Well-worn and established pathway. And again, I'm just applying a little bit of pressure and, and I'm increasing the size of my little blades of grass as I'm getting closer this way. A little bit of pressure and keeping a really organic, inconsistent look to it. All right. 
So right now we have a good outline, a good line drawing of what we want to do. We're going to have, again, our light source coming from the right-hand side. So all of our shadows are going to come and be on the left-hand side, mostly. And we're going to go through and kind of add texture to this drawing. as we get further along. Some vertical slots for the door. Hint of a doorknob. Not gonna get too detailed. A little shadow. Okay. Okay. Hi, guys. Ah, no, it's not a ravine. <laughs> okay, so now what we do is we're going to hit the main tree here with some texture and some directional lines to give the illusion of its volume shape rather than it being kind of flat right now. So we're gonna go through and what I wanna do right now is just kind of have directional lines and show the texture of this tree and all the really cool curves and gnarls of this tree, as you can see, kind of going through. And because I want my shadow to be on the left-hand side, or our left-hand side, I'm adding more pressure from the bottom and I'm pulling these lines up. You see that? And you can use this technique on a lot of different things. You guys see that? And I'm also going to mix in some hatching going in different directions to emphasize that. And this is like a, a knot kind of thing. Okay. There's one. So we're going to go and show some of the, and transition, we're going to show some of these, these gnarled lines. And I'm going to light first, I'm going to add more pressure as I go. And because this is like a separate little area here, I'm going to break this up a little bit, as you can see and showing those differences right now. Okay. Same thing down here, a little bit more pressure, pull up, it's by our door. Same thing down here. And I'm just making this up. This is just coming down here and I want to fill this and create some information there, so I'm creating that new little root coming down. Hi guys. And, okay, so I have this information here. Let's, let's divide this here and do another root. Now, I'm going to go through and continue with marks to indicate direction and volume. Just like so.
And again, I want my shadows, my heavier shadows to be on the left, our left, the tree's right. So I'm gonna use more of a distant grip as I'm working on this side here and add more shadows. I'm keeping some of the texture, but it's gonna be lighter, okay? Hi guys, good morning. And as I go further away, I'm not gonna be as detailed. But I do wanna show some of the texture. Because this is more of an illustration rather than a realistic drawing. If that makes any sense. So I'm going to put a heavier line on this left hand side. Okay. Hey guys. So I'm gonna come in here on the top of this root and kind of draw these directional lines to show form. And then create more shadows this way. You see that? And to sharpen a, a crayon, all I did was use a, an old pencil sharpener, hand pencil sharpener. I wouldn't recommend doing it in an electric sharpener, but an old hand sharpener works just fine. Or if you have that box of 28, which comes with the built-in sharpener, go ahead and use that. Those things are amazing too as well. Okay. Now I'm also gonna come back through here and add More directional stuff here to kind of blend these directions. And this is like you're shading. All right. So now I'm going to go through with a little bit of cross hatching. And again, I kind of, you know, because it's a crayon, you want to show some of your marks. You want to show your marks to give it that texture because you are creating a tree. Hey, Savannah. Um, Maya. Hello. Again, showing marks as I'm going through this. And then blending a little bit. Not too much, though. Okay. Miss Amanda, Amy Chu. Huh. All right, so I'm going to go up to this branch, this really big branch, and just kind of work on getting this kind of showing its true colors. Okay, so I'm gonna use, again, directional marks to show that it's kind of coming towards us. You guys see that? I'm 
also going to do some shading too here to show, you know, that our light source is coming from the right. Hi, Mia. So again, I'm using the crayon and applying pressure to create these dark, darker lines, these darker marks as I'm coming through here. And I'm also, again, putting them in a direction that's going to describe the shape of the branch of themselves. I miss you too, Mia. Tough times, I know. And I'm so sorry, guys, about your, your senior year, man. Unprecedented, this crazy time. Hi, Ruby. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time over here on this branch, drawing in shapes with lines. Put in a heavier shadow so that you can see these highlights. What's cool about crayon is that it is one of the oldest forms of drawing. Um, all the great masters from the Renaissance used crayons. They would call them cera or wax, con pigmento, with pigment added to them. And they would they didn't have graphite. They didn't have lead back then. They had wax crayons and that is what most of the Italian masters use to capture things to capture life drawings so right now seems I'm getting a lot of text messages from colleagues so I'm looking at my phone So right now I'm just going through and working on the texture of this tree to make it look really cool, okay? I'm gonna add some grass down here, some shadows. Give it a little bit of weight down here. Over on this side, switch crayons, and again. Do, 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 do. And again, this is just plain white sulfite paper. Um, really, really available. It's just, you know, you can get them at any arts and crafts store and they come in pads or they don't come in pads. You can, you know, you can buy them as loose leaf. Um, I buy them loose leaf for my students because we tend to make sketchbooks out of them and bind our own paper. Taught many people how to make books. I learned from a colleague of mine at Seaside named Dwight, who's now retired. 
It's one thing that I've, one practice that I've kept on, which is teaching kids how to make books. It's a lot of fun. Tyler, <laughs> Tyler. Hello, Lucy. I went to the beach yesterday, and that was pretty cool. Not many people there. Okay, so adding some shadows. by using cross hatching. Okay, I'm gonna go up here. Add some texture for the tree. Branch on this side. I'm gonna go through here. I think I'm gonna change the direction of these lines, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Flatten these over here a little bit. There we go. And the higher I go up here, the more in shadow these are gonna be. Why? Because these leaves up here are blocking, blocking the light. I'm gonna put one branch over here in shadow and then another one over here. Going off the page. Leaves, more leaves. Okay, now we're gonna go over on this side. Spend a little time filling these areas in with texture and shadow. Again, pressure along this line, pull up and release. You see that? And I'm just gonna do a hard line here to define that branch. And then go through and put in some more shadows on this side. More texture. Make a really dark ride there. Vertical lines through here too as well. Or long lines that's going to stretch out our drawing. And I'm also gonna go through in this middle section and make these really dark lines. Again, showing the directionality. Darken these lines here on the bottom, give it to get some more weight. Put some shadow in front of the door. 
Okay, so now we have a pretty good drawing of our 100 acre wood tree. Put a little shadow here, a little shadow there. We're gonna go through now, we're gonna come back to our pathway and to show some directionality that this is kind of not just a flat thing, but it actually has some dimension. We're gonna go through with some slanted lines coming through here. Okay, and down from there. Okay, same thing on this side. We're gonna do curved slanted lines coming down. Grass coming over it. And these are gonna get bigger as they get closer to us. We're not gonna show any of these because we're not seeing that curve because we're not, that's not our point of view anymore. If that makes any sense. Hope it does. All right, so you guys see that? Okay, now we're going to add just some, some curved lines here to give the illusion of a sloping path. You guys see that? And we're gonna add some shading lines. Underneath the grass. Same thing on this side. And these are just softer than those really heavier lines I put in. Kind of soften it up. Little ruts in our roadway. Mix it up a little bit and then connect some areas. You guys see that? Yeah. Okay. So we have our well-worn pathway. Maybe there's a couple stones in it. You know, some pebbles. some grass in here just hints nothing too crazy okay and then I'm also going to kind of smooth this out a little bit and put some directions as if it's like curling over if that makes any sense see that Okay, some shadow here, shadow here, just to soften it up a little bit. Darker over here. Hey, cool. Thank you for the refrigerator again, buddy. Even though I'm not using it right now. Okay, we're getting there. So next step, we're going to darken these values back here for the tree. Not get too, too detailed because we don't want them to be a distraction to our tree in the foreground here. Just enough. Hi, how you doing Elizabeth? Hope so. Just trying to create a healthy distraction and a healthy activity for kids to do. Oh, 
even though this is actually adding to people's screen time i just you know if you want to participate guys again no obligation if you don't just want to watch check in and then take off that's fine too um i'm doing this also for myself as well as as you guys So now we have our background trees and I'm just going to use a distant grip on my crayon. And I'm going to slowly build up values. I don't want it too dark. I don't want it, again, I want it to contrast with the, the value of the trunk. Okay, so, and I'm also going to be considered of, like, my light source again is going to be on the right-hand side, coming from the right-hand side. So I'm going to make the areas on, the, on this side lighter. And I'm just going through and just kind of adding value back here. And basically describing a hardwood forest further down the pathway. Maybe filling in some values of that there's bushes in the back, creating that illusion. Bushes here. Some shading here. Shading on this side. I'm keeping it playful. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do some value shading here in the back to represent the canopy of leaves that belong to this tree. Okay. So I'm just going through and I'll make these values pretty dark. I'm going to start with a base value that I can build out from. And maybe I'll pull it down a little bit further. And I'm going to go through and then kind of clean that up with leaf forms. Cole, what does no bro mean? What does that mean? If you're still there. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to go through and kind of define those leaves a little bit better. And just get these like basic leaf shapes here. See that? Yeah. Again, it's, it's you're creating an illusion. Drawings are illusions. So this is solidifying kind of a, a hint, right? And kids are always asking me, my students are always asking me, you know, how do you draw leaves? Well, this is kind of like the cheating way to do it, but it works. And maybe. 
maybe a leaf is falling. Maybe two leaves. So then, once we have that outline, we can go through and kind of clean it up. And now I'm going to be doing some kind of scribbling to show a little hint. And I'm adding more pressure as I'm doing this. A hint of the layers. So I'm just scribbling. Can you see that? Show a little hint. Again, this is just crayon. Do some more value shading here on the top and then go back and do a little bit more scribbling with some leaf shapes. Okay. Now I'm just gonna take a look at my drawing. Let me see. Oh, maybe I should add some. Maybe I should add some clouds. Passing through. To give it more depth, you know? More depth. Now, I'm going to just kind of spend a little bit of time here on the trunk, and then we're almost done. Some darker marks. Give it a little bit more texture as we go through here. Draw a gnome. A gnome? Mm. No. <laughs> no. On your drawing, if you're following me, you can do a gnome. But I'm not going to do a gnome. No, no, Athena, I'm not drawing a gnome. No, I refuse. <laughs> a little more texture on our pathway. No, this is not considered a. <laughs> oh boy. You're going to start a bad rumor, Cole. <laughs> no, I am not an ASMR artist. No, definitely not, dude. But I. Uh, I'm going to be really honest with you guys. I do not like the sound of my own voice. This has not been the easiest thing for me to do, so. 
Much love, y'all. Appreciate the support. No, Braden, it's not. But I hope you're drawing with me, kid. All right, let me define this pathway a little bit more. Get the grass on this side. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, Athena, killing me. Hopefully, at the end of next year, you'll be able to help us again with Art Expo, yeah? I'm counting on you and Liza to come back and help out. Can always come back, Braden. There's always gonna be room for you, child. I mean, uh, not that close to Thanksgiving break, but pretty close. Well, folks, we are pretty much done, and I don't want to overwork this drawing too much. Um, tune in tomorrow. We're going to go back to using <clears throat> graphite. It's going to be another graphite drawing, and I think we're going to have a lot of fun tomorrow. So tune in tomorrow, 11 o'clock again. Uh, for Creative Quarantine with Russell Loves Art. Um, if you can, please go to my YouTube channel. It's a link in my bio on my Instagram account. And click subscribe so you can access all the videos that I've uploaded so far. I'm a Luddite, so I'm learning how to do this. So I appreciate you guys' patience and support. Um, tune in tomorrow, 11 o'clock. See you on Thursday. Have a blessed day. Yes, I do have a YouTube channel. Have a blessed day. The link is in my uh, bio on my Instagram page, Athena. Um, have a great day. See you tomorrow at 11 o'clock.